Thanks for tuning in, homies. There's a common conception out there today, which is that basically the higher dose psychedelic you take, the more intense a trip you're going to have. But some of my most profound and intense experiences have actually come from some of my lowest doses of psychedelics. And that's because of one reason, meditation. Don't get me wrong, I have had high doses of psychs. I've had a breakthrough in DMT and they are pro fucking profound, absolutely. And I would say probably that you are committed to profound experiences when you take high doses of psychedelics more than a meditation. So you don't really need much practice to be able to have an ego death. Whereas with meditation, it's probably gonna take you a while to get there. The reason though that I prefer meditation is because if you've never actually had an ego death experience before and you're not sure if it's an experience you can handle, if you take yourself, you know, a big dose of DMT and all of a sudden you feel like you're imploding and your atoms are splitting at their seams and you're like, oh shit, this is way more intense than I wanted. <laughs> it's too late. And that's not to say you'll have a bad trip, you know, like DMT pretty much shocks everyone for the first time when they have that high dose. But even so, you may not just want that experience. Meditation, however, can take you to some surprisingly deep places. I've met entities on half a tab of DOB, which is psychedelic amphetamine. Before I did the meditation, I wasn't feeling anything at all. I could barely feel it. Then I did the techniques that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys in a second. And next thing I was being thrusted into alternative realities. Um, I met these mathematical cube entities which communicated a whole new emotion that I've never felt before. The emotion itself, my brain just could not process it seemed. And I was not able to have a thought, period. I was trying to think couldn't think in language. My mind just started to crumble. And again, I could feel like my atoms started splitting at the seams. I opened my eyes because I wasn't ready for that experience at the time. It became too much, which is the fantastic thing about meditation. Uh, kind of fantastic thing and kind of a bad thing. Like I can't, to this day, I wish I just stuck with it, but um, I opened my eyes because I just wasn't ready and prepared for the ego death experience. Like that's not what I was expecting from the meditation. But that's my point is that um, you can get fucking deep with these techniques. I've had seriously intense trips on just weed by itself using these same techniques. This is not to relax during a trip. This is not how to, if you're having a bad trip, calm yourself down. Probably the exact opposite. This is how to make the trip 10 times more intense. So let's get to it. Before I start though, if this doesn't work for you, don't worry about it. There's tons of guys on the internet who are absolute professionals that have dedicated their life to meditation. So. I, I basically listen to some astral projection techniques and then fine tune that to get the techniques that uh, really worked for me. So if these don't work for you, just find like a, a serious meditator, listen to it and then fine tune that to uh, make it work for you for when you're taking psychedelics. Um, hopefully this does the trick for you anyway. So step one, wait for the peak of your trip to begin. As the peak of your trip is starting, this is when you begin to meditate. You wanna find yourself a dark room to do this. Um, I have a room that when I turn off all the lights, it goes pitch black. That's the room I use. But if you don't have something that dark, don't worry, just find a comfortable space in your bedroom, turn off all the lights, close all the windows, and just get as dark as possible. Just so that if you open your eyes a little bit, the trip's not gonna stop immediately. That way you're a little bit more committed to the experience and psychologically that helps you to go deeper because it's not like you still have one foot in the sober reality. The other thing is, if you have any weed, this is the time to smoke it just before you meditate. Don't smoke your weed before you take the psychedelic. Don't smoke your weed just as soon as you take the psychedelic. Smoke your weed as soon as you feel the peak setting in. Smoke your weed, then meditate. Pretty much like as soon as you can after you've smoked the weed. Now, don't worry if you don't have any weed, um, you don't have to do this. In fact, you know, you can do these techniques on just weed by itself and it will still give you some profound experiences. But the reason why I suggest smoking your weed is because weed is a psychedelic itself. So if you're mixing it with things like LSD and shrooms, it's going to make the experience a lot more intense. And that's what we want. We want you to start meditating at the most intense moment of your trip. Basically because what we're trying to do is get you to disengage with your sober reality as much as you can. If you don't start meditating at your peak or if you smoke your weed and wait about a couple of hours before you start meditating, 
what you're doing is you're getting all of these insane, new, unfamiliar feelings arising and then you're associating them with your outside world. Basically, your ego and your identity has imprints on all of your outside world. So if you feel these new feelings coming on and you're hanging out with all these things that are associated with your identity, then naturally these new feelings are gonna start bonding with your identity as well. So when you start meditating, you may be feeling these psychedelic sensations, but they've already bonded with your identity. So you're not gonna be having that ego death experience. So meditate as soon as you've smoked your weed or at the peak of your psychedelic trip at the very least. Now you want to lay still comfortably with your arms by your side. Step two is concentrate on your third eye. So basically your third eye is this, it's a hard thing to describe. It's kind of like this realm between your vision. So if you felt your third eye before, just focus on that. But if you haven't done so before, don't worry. One way I've found that helps you get in touch with your third eye is to actually um, roll your eyes back into your head just a little bit with your eyes closed. What this will do is create a little bit of tension and it will actually feel like the tension is probably about there. That's where you want to concentrate all your attention into. Don't roll your eyes back so much that this tension is uncomfortable. Otherwise, it's going to be too distracting. Don't worry, you won't have to be doing this for the whole meditation. You'll probably only have to do this for about a minute or so, basically until you've entered the zone um, that you'll need to be in. And to help you get to that zone, step three basically is ignore everything. At this point, your brain is gonna start freaking out a little bit, but it's going to be feeling things that it hasn't felt before. It hasn't been this stoned and not been engaged with its body. It's wondering if you're sick, it's wondering if you're injured, it's wondering if you're dying. So it wants to latch onto something it's familiar with. So it sends you itches so that you'll scratch it and all of a sudden it will send it something that it's familiar with and it will calm it down. But the problem is these feelings will anchor you down into your own identity. So you need to ignore your itches. They won't last for long. If you ignore an itch, it will last like 30 seconds and then it'll be gone again. Ignore all of them until eventually your, your brain just gives up and it's like, okay, he's not gonna scratch these itches. Maybe we can get him to shuffle about, ignore it. And once you ignored all that, it will probably then start sending you a lot of panicked thoughts and you're gonna start thinking on overload, overthinking a lot. And these thoughts themselves will also act as anchors, stopping you from floating away and entering the ego death reality. So ignore your thoughts. If you haven't had practice meditating, um, this might be easier said than done. So sober meditation can help practice and set you up for your meditation psychedelics. But personally, I've always found it easier to ignore my thoughts when I'm on psychedelics anyway, um, while meditating. So you're also beginning flooded with insane sensory feelings and closed eyed visuals. It may feel like your feet are all of a sudden uh, floating next to your head and your ears have popped off and started disappearing miles away. It might even feel like your body's starting to twist and turn into a spiral. Like some weird things can happen. Ignore all of it. You just have to. Um, you just have to. You'll go like that's those experiences. They're not close to the DMT experience. The more you ignore, the deeper you go, basically. If you do this successfully, you might start floating away into some pretty intense realities. This takes me to step four, which is fear nothing. When we're in these places, it can be scary, you know. Um, I've talked about entities a lot. If you're someone who's never met a psychedelic entity before, then, you know, you're probably just gonna be like, what the fuck is this loon on about? But it probably is all in the imagination. I do believe, actually, it's all part of the imagination. But um, the imagination's a crazy thing. And the imagination might have a lot more to do with our reality than we give it credit for. But basically, when I say entities, I mean things that feel like they have a separate consciousness to your own, a unique consciousness that you can't understand, and they have an ability to affect you. If you're in a dream and you're having a conversation with another person, that person's an aspect of your mind, but it's still an entity, you know? So whether or not these uh, entities are real or, you know, whatever is beyond the point because they have the same sense of realness as any other entity we'd meet in the sober reality. They still have shitloads to teach you and they can still affect you in ways you've never been affected before. 
But anyway, I'm getting beyond the point. A lot of people do worry about actually getting possessed by entities, meeting dark entities that can follow them back, or meeting entities that seem to be good, but actually are dark. And you know, basically all these things that you see in Hollywood horror films. If you have nothing to fear, there is no place for these dark entities to reside. I mean, the common theme in horror films is that the entities first are making you terrified. They are slowly getting you more and scared. You know, they move a door a little bit, then they drop your keys, and then all of a sudden they grab your foot, and then next thing they are able to be seen. And the theme in these films is that they are slowly getting you more and more afraid. And the more afraid you get, the more powerful these entities become. Because these dark entities reside in fear. That's where they belong. That is like the energy frequency that they live in. They are manifestations of fear. So if you are not afraid, then they have nowhere to live inside you. Not saying you have to think a lot, but if you get into a situation where all of a sudden you become afraid, just remember that it's your fear itself that gives the darkness its power. Really, there's nothing to fear. These entities are not going to latch themselves onto you and uh, possess you afterwards unless you let them by being paranoid and, and afraid that that's happened. Because it's your paranoia itself that is the dark entity, so to speak. So yeah, like I just want to put that out there because you all meet positive entities. I've met these entities that I've talked about before, the machine elves. Intuitively, I felt like they were just the same entities that Terence McKenna had talked about for some reason. Um, even though they didn't look the same. But the shit they were saying was just freaking beautiful. Like, uh, it's changed my life now. And in that sense, they have kind of latched themselves onto me because a part of them is encoded in the information that they shared with me. And I'm absolutely implementing that information in my everyday life. So I guess I kind of am possessed by these entities if you want to look at it like that. But anyway, that's pretty much the video, guys. Um, you'll get to a point where you just want to stop and open your eyes or feel around for the light and then turn the light on and it'll be over. Um, I will warn you that your trip will then be a little bit more intense. Like your normal sober reality will seem like, it will seem like you've taken a higher dose than you have just because the most intense part of the trip has happened while you've been in these alternative realities. So when you're coming back into your sober reality, like you're feeling all those same feelings, but they haven't had time to bond with your outside world. Um, so you might feel a bit disassociated from your surroundings. Don't worry, all that resets perfectly once you once the trip's over. So yeah, guys, relax, enjoy yourselves. If you guys have some pretty cool trips um, using these techniques, let me know. Uh, either message me on Instagram or leave me a comment, just letting me know because I do also want to create a video in the future sharing my favorite trips that you guys have um, told me. And the trips I love are the ones that are like, really psychedelic they have like are just full of awesome psychedelic uh, revelations and and knowledge and all the rest of it if you want to learn from these trips i recommend um, laying down with a laptop or like a notepad uh, for me i found it easier to do it with a laptop so i could just uh, film myself because i was too fucked to really type properly and then after like about 20 minutes or after about half an hour you'll probably naturally want to open your eyes just turn on the computer, start talking about what you've learned, turn it off again, and then return to meditating. And when you watch those videos, it's fucking wicked. So many things that you would have just naturally forgot when you watch that video, those videos the next day, like it's just blowing your mind. It's, it's really cool. Anyway, guys, hope you're having a fucking great day because you deserve to be having a great day. Remember to live the life that you want to live. Don't live the life that someone else wants you to live. If you're into psychedelic content, hit subscribe and also hit that bell notification thing because I'm probably not going to be uploading every week. You know, I just want to make the best content I can. So it does take a while for me to get the right video out, but um, I'll, I'll still be uploading as often as I can. So see you soon. Peace.